Welcome to Salmon in the Schools. My name is Megan and I am a salmon biologist working for South Puget Sound Salmon Enhancement Group. I am so excited to start this journey with you to learn all about salmon. Today is the first presentation we'll do during the school year. In January, you'll get your eggs and in late March, we'll release your fry. But today we are going to learn all about the salmon life cycle. So let's get started. So today's presentation will cover what are salmon, what are the six stages of the salmon life cycle, and what do salmon need at each stage of their life cycle? So first, what are salmon? Salmon are a type of fish. They are native to the Pacific Northwest, and there are several species of salmon. They're all part of the same family. So we'll learn more about all of the different species in the next presentation, but today we're gonna to just focus on the salmon family. And one of the things that makes salmon unique are that they are anadromous. So that means that they spend part of their lives in freshwater and part in saltwater. And not many fish can do this. So this is really special. So I told you you're gonna learn about the salmon life cycle, but what is a life cycle? A life cycle is the natural process of how an organism lives, grows, and dies. All living things have a life cycle. Plants have a life cycle. They start as seeds that germinate, and then they sprout into seedlings. They grow into an adult plant. And when their flowers are pollinated by a bee, they produce fruit. That fruit contains more seeds, which starts the cycle all over again. Humans have a life cycle too. We grow in our mother's womb and then we're born and we're babies. Then we're toddlers. And then we get old enough to go to preschool, then elementary school, and then we're teenagers. We get a little bit older and now we're adults. And then finally we get really old and we're officially old people. One of the most interesting things about salmon is their life cycle. Salmon have a life cycle just like you and I, but they do things a little bit different. We're going to learn about each of these stages today. The big picture is that they start as eggs laid in a gravel nest in fresh water. They hatch into alvin, grow into fry, leave the river and migrate into the estuary as smolts. Then they live in the ocean to grow big as adults and then return as spawners to the river where they were born. Humans and salmon actually have a lot in common. We both need to be able to breathe. So humans get oxygen from the air, but salmon, they get oxygen from the water. We both need to be able to eat. Humans, we eat all sorts of foods. Your favorite food might be pizza or tacos or ice cream. But a salmon, its favorite food when it's little in the river is insects. So we both need to be able to hydrate ourselves. Humans do that by drinking water. Salmon do that by absorbing water through their skin and gills. And lastly, we both need to be able to stay safe and healthy. Humans do that by living in houses and wearing clothes. Salmon stay safe and healthy by living in clean streams. They can't escape nature, so they need a clean lake or stream or ocean to live in. So let's turn to page three of our Simon Science Journals and we're going to create a salmon life cycle book. You can come back later to color in your salmon, but for now, let's just write our names and write our salmon life cycle story. Our first step is to fill out the salmon life cycle. We'll learn a lot more about each stage here in a minute, but let's just get the bigger picture for now. So salmon start their lives in freshwater as eggs. That's E-G-G. -G. They then hatch into alevin, A-L-E-V-I-N. When they absorb their yolk sac, they are now fry, F-R-Y. When they leave the river and swim to the estuary, they're smolts, S-M-O-L-T. 
Then they swim to the Pacific Ocean and they grow big as ocean adults. O-C-E-A-N space A-D-U-L-T. Then finally, they return to the stream where they were born as spawners. S-P-A-W-N-E-R. They'll lay more eggs and the cycle will begin again. Now we're going to look closer at the first stage of the life cycle, the egg phase. Let's turn to page five of our life cycle book. First, we're going to fill in the blanks for the egg life stage, and then we're gonna fill in the blanks for the alevin life stage. Now remember, the white words highlighted with black are the ones we want to write in our journal. So let's read together. In the fall, salmon start their lives as eggs buried in gravel at the bottom of a freshwater stream. A female salmon can lay over 7,000 eggs. The female beats her tail in the gravel to make a nest called a red. That's R-E-D-D, -D, two Ds in there. And those eggs, they need cold, clean, and clear water to survive. So what is happening in the egg stage? As an egg, salmon are forming their bodies and their eyes become visible like two black dots on the egg. They live in fresh water and they need that water to be cold and oxygen rich. The gravel must be free of silt also so the eggs don't suffocate. The only food they need is the yolk of their egg. They're facing a lot of predators, including other fish like trout, birds like kingfishers, and mammals like otters. Other threats they're facing include temperature change because semen can't live in warm water. Uh, gravel disturbances can also harm them. If floods wash the gravel away, it might take the eggs with them. Pollution is harmful to developing salmon eggs because chemicals are toxic to salmon. And lastly, dirt in the water can clog a salmon's ability to breathe. So they're going to be eggs for about 60 days. So maybe our egg phase page looks something like this now. Soon, your eggs will hatch and transform into small alevin, hiding within the gravel bed until they can swim freely. So let's learn more about that next stage, the alevin stage. So let's read together and fill in the blanks as we go. After a few months, the eggs hatch into alevin. The alevins stay in their gravel nest until they've used up all of the nutrients in their yolk sac. And they're now strong enough to swim and inflate their swim bladder by taking a gulp of air at the water surface. So what's happening in the alevin life stage? As alevin, salmon exit their egg membrane and live in the spaces between the gravel they live in fresh water and it needs to be cold and oxygen rich. It still needs to be free of silt because the alevin are living in those spaces between the rocks. They don't need food yet because their yolk sac is still feeding them. And you can see in that picture how their yolk sac is still attached to their belly. They're still facing the same predators as when they were eggs, the trout, the kingfisher, the otter, and the other uh, threats they're facing are pretty much the same too. Temperature change, gravel disturbance, pollution, and that dirt in the water. They're going to be alevin for another 30 to 60 days. So maybe our alevin phase page looks something like this now. Alevin spend most of their stage hidden in gravel to avoid harm. Your salmon will do the same. By relying on their yolk sac, they'll slowly get bigger until they button up and absorb the, the yolk sac entirely. Eventually, they'll swim up out of the gravel to the water surface, take a gulp of air, and inflate their swim bladder so that they can balance and swim easily and become fry.
The next stage is the fry stage. Sometimes people will call this the par stage also, and we'll learn a little bit more about why here in a bit. Salmon fry live in freshwater streams or lakes. This is a school of curious little coho uh, salmon fry or par living in a stream right here in Western Washington. Let's turn to page six of our life cycle book. We're going to fill in the blanks for the fry life stage first and then the smolt life stage. Okay, let's read together. Once the alevin absorb their yolk sac, they get hungry. They are now fry. They leave their gravel nest in search of food. Fry love to eat insects like stoneflies, mayflies, and caddisflies. Fry also have par marks that camouflage them in the stream from predators. So remember that sometimes the fry stage is also called par. This is because of their camouflage par marks at this age. So what's happening in the fry life stage? As a fry, salmon inflate their swim bladder they are catching their own food now, since they're swimming around in the river and no longer hiding in the gravel. They are imprinting on the scent of their home river where they were born so that they can find their way back home. They're still living in fresh water and it still needs to be cold and oxygen rich. But now that they're swimming, they need stream cover to provide protection and hiding places. They're now eating larval insects and even fish eggs when they can find them. They're still facing the same predators as when they were eggs and alevin, uh, the trout, kingfisher, and otters. The other threats they face are mostly the same too, temperature change, pollution, dirt in the water. But now they're also facing blockages to their migration routes. If they can't get to where they need to go, this can be a big problem for fry. Each species of salmon spends a different amount of time as a fry in their freshwater stream. Coho may be fry for a year or more, but chum, like what we're going to be raising in your classroom tank, only spend about one to two weeks as a fry. So maybe our fry phase page looks something like this now. We just learned that fry need to inflate their swim bladder before they can do all the fry things they need to do. But once they do that, they have two main jobs. Their first job is to eat. So what does a fry eat? They love to eat macroinvertebrates. These are insects that live in the stream with the fish. These insects don't have a backbone, but they're big enough to be seen without a microscope. Salmon will eat the larval forms of these insects as well as the flying adult forms of the insects. So like a caterpillar is the larval form of a butterfly and the beautiful flying version is the adult. Salmon don't usually eat butterflies, but they do love to eat dragonflies, mayflies, and caddisflies, and they love to eat other salmon eggs. A fry's second job is to imprint on their home stream. They need to be able to use their senses to get them back home to their natal stream once they're adults and ready to come back home to spawn. Each stream has its own unique recipe of qualities, nutrients, and smells, kind of like a, a secret sauce. So first, they use magnetic fields. Salmon are so sensitive that they can feel the magnetic fields of the earth. Kind of like how your family pulls you towards your home when you're away, you feel that. Earth's magnetic field 
pulls salmon towards the home they're used to. Second, they use salinity, and salinity is salt. So the ocean has different levels of saltiness in different areas, and fish can sense this. They also use temperature. The water is much colder up north, like in Alaska, but it gets warmer as they swim south, back towards Puget Sound. Lastly, they use chemical odor. Just like each of our houses smells unique, a salmon stream smells unique to them because of the rocks and the soil, the plants, minerals, nutrients, and other animals that live there. It all creates a unique smell that the salmon can detect. So here's an example of what the par marks look like. If our fish is one of the type that likes to spend lots of time in fresh water before moving out to the salt water, they'll develop par marks. These are vertical stripes or spots that help the fish camouflage from predators. They blend in with the sticks and leaves in the stream and birds and bigger fish have a harder time seeing them, especially from above. So next up is the smolt stage. Let's read together again. In the spring, the fry lose their camouflage color and turn silver. They are now smolts. They migrate downstream through many obstacles to reach the estuary where fresh water mixes with salt water. So what's happening during the smolt life stage? As a smolt, salmon are migrating to the estuary and adapting their bodies to salt water after living in fresh water. They lose their par marks and develop a silvery color because this is better camouflage for the ocean. So they now live in an estuary where fresh water and salt water mix. They need this water to be unpolluted. They also need estuary plants for shelter now that they don't have trees like they did in the stream. They're going to eat zooplankton, insects, shrimp, and smaller forage fish. Now that they're in a little bit more open water, they're going to be facing bigger predators like bigger salmon, great blue herons, and seals. The other threats that they're going to face out in the estuary as smolts are mainly pollution and the destruction of habitat for the forage fish that they really uh, like to eat when they're out there growing big. And right now, they're going to be in the estuary for two to six months as smolts. So I just mentioned that smolts have to adapt to salt water after living in fresh water. So how do they do that? It's a process called smoltification. And the biggest part of this process is that they have to flip a filter in their gills. In freshwater streams, they have to let salt water in, but they have to change that to push salt water out by the time they get to the ocean. So living in the estuary gives them time to process this change since it's a mix of that freshwater and salt water. It's like getting a door to open out instead of in. It's really difficult and it's amazing that they're able to do this. So maybe our smolt phase page looks something like this now. So first our salmon lived in fresh water as eggs, alevin, and fry. Now our salmon are smolts living in the estuary. And this is a school of salmon smolts trying to figure out where to go once they hit that estuary. There's a lot more open space out there, a lot more options. The next phase in the salmon life cycle is the ocean adult phase. Let's turn to page seven of our life cycle books. We're going to fill in the blanks for the adult life stage and then the spawner life stage. So let's read together. When the smolts are big enough, they leave the estuary 
and live in the ocean. It takes many years for them to grow big enough to become an adult. Salmon migrate to the ocean because the ocean has more food. Some sw salmon swim 2,000 miles in search of cold water and nutrients. So what's happening in the adult life stage? The adult salmon is living in the ocean now and they are going to grow really big. They're living in pure salt water out in the Pacific Ocean. They're going to be eating a lot of small forage fish like herring. They'll also eat zooplankton and larval crustaceans like juvenile crabs or shrimp. And now they're facing even bigger predators like cod, bald eagles, whales, and even humans. The biggest other threats they'll face are ocean pollution, ocean temperature change, and overfishing. They're going to spend most of their lives in the ocean, anywhere from two to five years, and they're gonna spend this time just growing really, really big. Most of their time in the ocean is spent eating or being eaten by other animals. So maybe our adult phase page looks something like this now. So we know that salmon spend two to five years growing big in the ocean. And while they're out in the ocean, they can travel more than 3,000 miles. Sometimes they're traveling over 18 miles per day. Different species are going to travel different amounts. So you can see that the Chinook, Sockeye, Chum, Coho, and Pink Salmon, they all take different routes. They're all going north towards Alaska, but some of them travel further than others. And remember how we talked about how the salmon find their way home earlier? Magnetic fields, salinity, temperature, and their sense of smell are what help them find their natal stream after traveling all of these thousands of miles. At this point, it's now fall or autumn. What kind of things do we see in fall? Do we see changing leaves, maybe pumpkins? What else might we see? Maybe salmon returning home? Spawning starts in the fall and is the last thing salmon do before they die but it produces new eggs and new baby salmon in the future. So this is the final stage of the salmon life cycle. This is the final life stage for our salmon life cycle book. So let's read together. As spawners, salmon return to their natal stream, the same stream where they were born. They navigate home by using their sense of smell and by following Earth's magnetic field kind of like a compass. After they lay their eggs, they die. Their carcasses provide nutrients for the whole ecosystem. So we're at the last life stage. What's happening during the spawning life stage? As spawning adults, salmon develop eggs and milt. They change color from their silver ocean color to bright reds and greens. They're also changing shape with the males developing these huge hooked noses and jaws. They're absorbing their scales to help regulate water and salt levels as they transition back from salt water to fresh water. And they're going to stop eating. Um, they don't need to, to eat anymore. They're only living on stored body fat. So they're back living in fresh water after having lived in the salt water for many years, and they're looking for silt-free gravel to lay their eggs. Like we said, they're not eating, so they're not looking for any food. All their focus is on spawning right now. But they still have to face predators. Lots of predators wait for salmon to return, including bald eagles, humans, whales, sea lions, bears, and even wolves. The main threats they're facing when they're in the spawning life stage is warm river temperatures,
pollution, obstructions like dams or culverts that they can't jump over, and overfishing. Once a salmon spawns, they die within about a week. So maybe our spawner phase pairs. When salmon are ready to spawn, they seek out mates and they pair up. The female uses her tail to dig in the gravel to create a nest or a red. So what is a red, you might ask? A red is a salmon nest. If you're ever walking down a stream during spawning, it's pretty easy to spot a red. And that's on the top uh, picture there because the gravel covering the red has obviously been disturbed. The rocks look really clean and free of algae. Each of these nests contains about 3,000 eggs. Once the red is dug, they spawn. Here are two salmon mating and making a red. Gravel size is really important. If you look at the gravel in this picture, the rocks are just the right size. If they're too big, a female can't move them with her tail. If the rocks are too small, they won't protect the eggs very well once the red is covered. And they also might smother the eggs if it's too fine. They don't let enough oxygen through. The female salmon releases her eggs at the same time the male salmon releases his milk to fertilize them. The eggs then settle down into that gravel nest that she worked so hard to dig. Then the female will dig more gravel to bury the eggs and protect them as they incubate. After reds are created and spawning is finished, our salmon will die, usually within a week. These carcasses are really important though, because they're a huge food source for predators like eagles, bears, and bobcats. And also, when salmon come back to the river, they bring back those marine-derived nutrients. And as the carcasses decompose, those nutrients work their way into the soils, making the whole ecosystem healthier and fueling growth in the forest. Kind of like adding fertilizer to your plants back home, but way more powerful. We know that at least 137 species of birds, fish, and mammals rely on those returning salmon. All of these species need salmon. So not only do the salmon leave behind those marine derived nutrients that fertilize the forest and feed the other animals, they also leave behind the eggs. So when we come back in January, we'll have a few hundred fall chum eggs just like these for you guys. All right, we have officially completed the salmon life cycle. Today we wrote the story for our salmon life cycle book. It was a lot of work, I know. And after I leave, I want you to work on it a little bit more by drawing each of those salmon life stages in your salmon life cycle book. There is a picture on each of those pages and a blank space to the right of it is waiting for you to draw your salmon. If anyone has any comments or questions, let's hear them. Don't be shy, 